Not to be dramatic, but this video might change your life and your apartment and the entire trajectory of your home decor experience forever. It's gonna be a good one. <laughs> Today's video is one that I am so excited to share with you guys because it is on one of my favorite topics relating to home decor and that is Facebook Marketplace. Now, if you follow me on social media, you have seen a lot of videos that I've posted relating to Facebook, the things that I've found, even some tips that I've shared here and there about how I find my favorite things on Facebook Marketplace. If you don't yet follow me on social media, I'd love for you to check out my Instagram and TikTok. Follow me there, reach out, say hello. Today I'm gonna to be sharing all my best tips with you, what to do, what to not do. I really never understood the power of this platform until I moved to Los Angeles. And it's funny because back when I lived in North Carolina, I feel like it's probably so much easier to find things that are really cool there because specific styles and things that I love probably aren't as like known there or like coveted there. Whereas in LA, the market's like very saturated. There's a lot of amazing things, but there's also a lot of people looking for amazing things. So I wish I had known about a lot of these tips earlier so that I could have really leveraged my small town Facebook marketplace. No matter where you are, I think that you'll be able to gain great insight and advice from this video. Sometimes when I post content on social media about Facebook marketplace, people will comment and let me know that normally if they live outside the US that Facebook marketplace isn't as good there. So I guess that is like the one stipulation is I feel like Facebook marketplace is probably the strongest in America. But I don't know for certain because I don't live in those other markets. So if you aren't in America, this video might not be as helpful to you. But if you still wanna watch, you're more than welcome to, because who knows, maybe the tips could come in handy down the road if you know you end up deciding to dive into that Facebook marketplace life, <laughs> which is a very addicting life to live, I'm not gonna lie. There really is such a thrill to shopping on Marketplace because it feels like the same sensation as going into a thrift store where you know there's gems hidden somewhere and you wanna be the first to get it or you wanna be, you just like wanna dig through everything and find the coolest things. There's such a high when you're able to score a beautiful piece of furniture or artwork or, I mean, everything is sold on Marketplace. It's not just home stuff. Obviously today I'm kind of more talking about home decor items, but people sell everything on Facebook from used clothing to cars to sofas and everything in between. But the feeling of finding something that you know is like a crazy rare or expensive piece and getting it for like 75 to 90% off, it just feels surreal and i've had those experiences before and i wake up every day first thing i check is facebook marketplace like i am fully addicted and had plenty of experiences on the platform to where i do feel confident enough to like show up and give you guys the best advice we're gonna go over the do's first and then we're gonna go over the don'ts so let's not waste any more time and get into the video Okay, the first do is always ask, do you have anything else? I posted a video about this recently on TikTok. People were pretty shocked at the simplicity of the advice, but when you go to buy an item on Facebook Marketplace, for example, <laughs> if you were buying this really cool candlestick holder, chances are the person selling it if they own this piece of art, they probably have a house filled with other similar items. Or if they have an item that speaks to your design style and your taste, they probably have other pieces that do as well. And the thing about Facebook Marketplace uh -huh. is it's kind of a process to list items out. Like it feels like a job because you have to take pictures of everything. You have to figure out the title, the description, know the market value. Like there's just a lot to it. So a lot of times when people list a few items, they actually have quite a few other items they haven't even listed yet. And I feel like in those moments, that's when you get the really good stuff because when you're buying an item like that candlestick, for example, and you are already in talks with the seller and you're gonna buy one thing from them, it always helps to say, do you have anything else you're planning on selling? Or do you have any other items that you wanna get rid of that you think I might like? Some variation of that type of question. <laughs> they start thinking about pieces in their house that they maybe weren't gonna get rid of or they just haven't 
listed yet that, you know, now they have a captive seller in front of them who's literally asking, do you have anything else I can buy? And you're gonna get first grabs at those pieces before anybody else. A lot of times when you're buying from a seller on Facebook Marketplace, if you're already in front of them, whether in person or in Messenger, and you are confirming to buy one item from them, and then you're inquiring about buying more items from them, they're probably gonna give you a better price per item for the entire lot of what you purchase. So not only do you get first grabs at all of these items, but now you also get a better price. I recently picked up these really beautiful red leather chairs from a seller on Marketplace. And I noticed in one of the photos, she had these really beautiful Herman Miller pendants hanging above the dining room table with the chairs that she was selling. And I just thought to ask, you know, are you selling anything else that you think I might like? And she responded and said, yeah, I'm selling the pendants if you're interested in those. And she also gave me a few other things that she was selling. I wasn't really interested in those other pieces, but of course I was interested in these really amazing Herman Miller pendants. We ended up negotiating a bit back and forth and I got all three of them for $200, which is crazy because one of these alone retails for 400 and most of the time when you find them used, they're still pretty close to their retail price. And a lot of times they're pretty busted looking, like they've got a hole in them or some other issue that, you know, deals with the structure or the integrity of the pendant itself. I've done this plenty of times before with sellers. This is just the most recent example of doing it and having success. This is a big, big piece of advice that I recommend you try implementing when you shop on Facebook because it has really worked wonders for me. The market here in LA is very intense and people snatch stuff up quickly. So if you can get at these pieces before anyone else, that's your best bet. That's how you secure the really rare pieces and the best deals on Marketplace. We're starting off really strong. That's honestly one of my favorite pieces of advice. So definitely do that. Our next do is do check the seller's rating before committing to buying their item. There's not a lot to elaborate on with this, but you just wanna make sure the person you're dealing with is good at communicating. They have sort of a track record that can eliminate any potential weird activity, such as like you driving 30 minutes to show up to their house to pick up the item and then they don't show up, they're not even there, or they sell somebody else there's just a million things that could go wrong on Facebook and you really want to make sure that before you buy from a seller on marketplace they have a decent star rating now there are times where someone is just new to the platform and they haven't done any transactions yet and therefore they don't really have a rating yet when you look at their profile it looks like there's nothing there to really show for their trustworthiness I guess as a seller I think in that case I would just try to have a little bit of conversation with them beforehand and feel out their vibe and just make sure they seem normal and act normal and they're not asking you to do anything sketchy like send a, I don't know, we'll get into the don'ts later. But yeah, you just wanna make sure that the person you're talking to is not suspect and they have a good rating or if they don't have a good rating, they look like a real person who's like friendly and trustworthy. Like if they don't have a profile photo, they don't have a rating and their name is just something super random or generic sounding, I probably wouldn't trust that. I wouldn't even bother engaging with whatever item it is that they're trying to sell. This one seems really obvious, but there's just been times where I've heard stories and the rating system exists on Facebook for that reason to really help eliminate bad experiences. So check the rating before you buy an item. The next do is do ask for clear pictures. If a seller lists an item that you think might be amazing and then the images and videos that are on the listing are really blurry or bad or it's just not super clear like the condition, don't be afraid to ask for clear images. Especially if you're buying a piece of furniture that's maybe not necessarily like a steal, like if you're spending a good amount of money on it, you wanna make sure that the item is in in good condition before you commit to driving over and checking it out and dealing with all that comes with buying something like that. A sofa, for example, can cost a thousand to, God, I've seen used sofas for even in like the five to $10,000 range on marketplace but you want to make sure that the listing you're shopping from has really clear images because if you go and see it in person and you notice all of these like damages and stuff but you just drove an hour to get there you're gonna probably feel some sort of like weird pressure to maybe 
buy the item still, which you shouldn't feel. <laughs> More on that later. It's kind of like a dating profile. Like you're not gonna feel confident in going to meet up with someone if their dating profile images are really blurry or weird or abstract. And it's like, you can't really see what you're buying. If that makes sense. <laughs> There's not too much more to elaborate on at this point. Just, yeah. Sellers will normally send you much clearer images after the fact, or if there's like a certain spot that you're like, hey, can you like take a closer image of that area? Like, I just want to make sure that's not what I think it is, like a rip or whatever. Just do it. Just ask. The worst they can say is no, and then you dodge a bullet. The next do is do ask if the price is flexible because it almost always is. Most people don't list items on Facebook with the intention of actually selling the item for that exact price. Even pieces that are more rare or desirable, I feel like there's always some flexibility in the price. So it never hurts to ask if they're willing to work with you on the price a little bit, especially if you are a serious buyer and you're trying to pick it up ASAP. People really value simplicity when they're selling on Facebook Marketplace. So if they find a buyer who's serious, the process is simple with them, it's very straightforward, and they know that the person's gonna actually come and pick it up today to get it off their hands, Hands, they'll normally work with you on price and I've literally had times where I found really cool pieces and the seller you know let's just say for example a dining room table was listed for a thousand dollars and I've messaged the seller and said like hey is the price flexible for pickup today they will almost always say yes it is and then you can say great what's your bottom line price that then puts it on the seller to come up with a price that feels good to them, but also they know is gonna be very enticing to you to like really come quickly and grab this piece. This is a great tactic. I hate using that word because it sounds so schemey, but it's a great thing to do when you're buying an item because why would you pay full price for it? That's no fun. There are definitely certain exceptions to this where an item is like super rare and so amazing and they're probably just not gonna work on the price. In that case, this doesn't really apply, but I would say nine times out of 10, this advice helps you get the best price a lot of the time. Our next to do is do bring a friend when you are going to buy an item. There are a couple reasons for this. One is of course safety. I think it's always good to bring a friend with you. I myself could be better about doing this. I think most of the time because I check the seller rating and you know I've had good conversation with these people. I've even had phone conversations before with sellers <laughs> before buying an item. Like I just feel like I always find a way to kind of connect with them before going to buy. So I don't always feel the need to bring a friend, but I think in general, it's a safe rule of thumb to bring a friend with you for the safety aspect of it all. But also there have been so many times where I've gone to buy like, for example, a chair. You don't think of a chair as being a really difficult thing to carry, but then you show up and you're like, wait, this is crazy awkward to grab by myself or it's like too heavy or you just never really know with certain pieces of furniture. So it's also good to have a friend who can be with you to help lift anything or move anything or hold the door for you. Most of the time, the seller is very hands off. Like they'll kind of bring the piece to like the front of their house or they may even bring it outside, but they don't do a lot of the heavy lifting in most cases. There have been some cases where I've met very nice people who have helped me literally load stuff into my car where I just, I came completely unprepared to these transactions. And then I'm like, oh my God, I don't even have anyone to like help me get this. Like, what am I gonna do? And the seller was super nice and, and helped me. But there's a lot of cases where that is not at all like feasible. Never want to assume that the seller is gonna help you do all of that. So having a friend's great for safety, but it's also good for moving pieces and just dealing with the process of transporting whatever it is you're buying. Our next do is do send a deposit if you find something that you know you love and you think a lot of other people are gonna try to get it. Even if you can pick up something immediately, I really feel like it's good to still send a deposit because there have been times where I have been in conversations with someone and said, hey, I wanna come pick this up. When are you available? And they would say, sounds good. I can do this evening and I'd be like, okay, what's your address? And in the middle of like waiting to hear their response, it doesn't matter if you're the first person to reach out about an item. I think it really comes down to who is sending a deposit or money first, because for the seller that indicates that you mean serious business. And when there's money involved, like it's yours at that point. Like even if you send $25 to hold something or $50, I mean, I, I think depending on the item you're buying and the dollar value, you want to kind of 
use common sense. Like I don't think I would ever send more than like $100 to just hold something for me, but sending a deposit is a great way to ensure that you are gonna get what you're inquiring about, especially if it's a really good deal. Send a deposit, get that deal locked in. You know, you don't wanna send a deposit too blindly. Like you wanna kinda know what you're buying. So I think it's really safest to do this if seller has good ratings, the pictures are clear, there's details about the piece, where it was bought from, how long they've had it. Show me your tax returns, show me your bank statements, show me your face, show me your profile. Your side profile. Those types of things really help eliminate risk. So I would probably avoid sending a deposit if you're very unclear about a lot of the other factors like condition and those types of things. But yeah, money is the answer. Money is king. It really just ensures that you're gonna win whatever item it is you're going for. So <laughs> even a little deposit just shows that you're committed. So be sure to do that if you can. For our last do, do communicate with a seller if you've bought something from them and you notice something that was not described in the condition originally. Because there have been times where I have bought items before and had them delivered, or even when I've gone to pick them up myself and you get them in your space and you're like, wait, there's like a giant rip in the back of this chair. Or you know, like this rug has like a weird stain on the corner of it that was not in pictures and was never talked about. You wanna make sure you communicate with the seller about this because they will most of the time try to make it right because there's a rating system on Facebook Marketplace. I always will communicate if I'm like, hey, I just got home and I noticed that you know X, Y, and Z is wrong. I would have really appreciated if you had communicated that beforehand with me, which sounds like so Karen to do, but <laughs> I don't know. It's like a lot of energy and money to do these transactions and then you've got to pay for shipping too or go through the process of picking things up yourself, all that. You want to make sure that like you're getting things at a fair price and that, you know, everything was transparent and communicated properly. You know, in certain cases, there are things you find for just insane prices where it's like, okay, I've just got to kind of accept the loss a little bit if there's like this little tiny damage. I mean, I don't think you should be like so over the top because if you are buying a used item, like it's used, so you have to kind of accept that but this is more in like major cases where you get a piece into your apartment or house or whatever and you realize like oh my god there's like all these little things that i didn't notice before or never would have thought to ask and they didn't state any of these damages in the description or in pictures bring it up to the seller see what they say hopefully they'll make it right and if they don't then i don't know it's on, it's on you if you want to leave a bad rating. I personally feel really weird leaving bad ratings, but luckily most of my experiences have been really good. But then you also don't want other people to buy from them and have similar experiences. So this is me giving you permission to like, it's okay to message the people and bring it up and try to get like a little bit of the money back or at least an I'm sorry or something. I don't know. Okay, now we're going to get into the don'ts. I got to sit back for this. Don't feel pressured to buy something you don't want. So there have been moments throughout my career in being a professional Facebook marketplacer where I have felt like a weird pressure to buy something if I've already kind of asked a bunch of questions or whatever. At the end of the day, if you don't want something, and this applies for just life, not just Facebook marketplace, don't do it. Like unless you've committed money to it, which in the case that you have submitted a deposit, like you, you, you've lost that. The point of a deposit is to show that you are committed and gonna come buy the item. But if you kind of ask a bunch of questions or ask for pictures or videos, like that's just part of the process. The seller most likely has someone else who is going to come and buy that item anyway at some point. You know, if you've already been messaging someone and told them like, hey, I, I'll meet you at this time at this place and then you're deciding you don't want it five minutes before you're supposed to meet them, that's not right, don't do that. But I do think if you've taken the time to communicate and whether you're like in messenger or even if you're in person if you check the piece out and it's just not what you want it's okay to say that you don't want it obviously if you see something in person and you realize you don't want it it's probably because of a reason that wasn't clearly made on the marketplace listing or through messages or whatever color might be off you might see it in person and there's like damages or something there's always a reason why you're gonna see something that you did want and then decide you don't want it so no matter the case, don't feel pressured because 
because buying things for your home specifically, it's an investment with your time, with transporting pieces, and then if you decide you don't want it, you have to go through the process of reselling it. Just don't buy things you don't actually want. There's just no point in it. It's okay to change your mind as long as you're doing it in a way that's moral and just and not like rude or completely disrespectful to the seller. Yeah. The next don't is one that I feel so strongly about because I have personal experience with this particular thing and that is don't pay the agreed upon price for something if you get there in person and there's like things wrong with the item that you didn't know about before. I was on the hunt for a bar cabinet for my apartment and I wanted a really cool vintage mid-century kind of style. I ended up finding one that I liked. It was I think $400 but on first dibs was going for like $1,200 to $2,000. So in my mind I was like okay that's a pretty good price. I think that this could be worth it. In pictures it looked like it was in great condition. There were no mentions of anything wrong with it. It was just one of those things where it felt like a good fit for what I was looking for. And when I showed up in person, the guy who was selling it was like, thank you so much for coming to buy this. I've been trying to sell this thing forever and I haven't had any luck. That was my first red flag. <laughs> I should have been like, okay, I wonder why. But then I saw it in person and realized that there was like a chip taken off the front veneer. The wheels that it rolled around on were super weird and like not wobbly, but like you could tell they just were not in the best condition. I think one of the wheels at one point fell off while I was like lifting this piece of furniture up. There were like stains and chips and stuff inside of the cabinet itself. Overall, the condition was probably like a three out of 10. It was just not great. And even though I was getting it for a pretty good price, the price I was paying was for a condition that was different from what the reality of the condition was, if that makes sense. I was in a pinch because I actually needed this bar cabinet for a brand deal. And I ended up just paying him the price. I, I sucked it up because I was there and I left feeling very defeated because I don't feel like I got what I thought I was going to get. I honestly regret not saying like, hey, I didn't realize there were like all these visual damages to it. Um, would you be open to giving me like a slightly better price because of that? Because I, you know, I don't feel comfortable spending the amount that we agreed on because the condition is not the same as what it was presented as online. I think the man would have probably taken $50 if I had offered it to him at that point because <laughs> he was very much trying to get rid of it. At the time I felt uncomfortable asking that and honestly, it still haunts me to this day that I didn't request a better price for the piece that I bought because I do feel like it would be justifiable to get a discount on it considering the damages. So learn from me and if you go to buy a piece of furniture or literally anything in person and you've agreed on a price and the condition is not what you thought it was, ask if they're willing to discount and if they aren't, it's okay to walk away and just say like, sorry, this isn't what I thought it was. Bye. <laughs> Okay, our next don't, and this is kind of something that we already discussed earlier, so I'm gonna be pretty quick on it, is don't expect the seller to help you do anything in regards to moving or lifting or transporting whatever it is you're buying. In some cases, the seller will help you, but it's always good to be prepared and expect that they're not going to help you. I have literally gone to pick things up before and forgot about the fact that, oh yeah, like I, I can't lift the sofa myself and I'm buying this from like an older woman, like she's definitely not lifting the sofa. So then I'd have to like go arrange that myself. It's just one of those like things that can be easy to forget. So I wanted to include that in this just to keep in the back of your brain. Um, yeah, never expect they're gonna help you move things because a lot of times they won't, sometimes they will. And if they do, give them a really great rating. That is super nice of them. They don't owe you that. It's a very rare thing to find sellers who will go the extra mile to help you because they don't really get anything out of helping you lift or move or do whatever with whatever you're buying. Our next don't is don't be unreasonable with 
discounts. And there is a fine line here because you obviously want to get things for the best price, but you also don't want to completely insult the person or make them feel like, okay, this person's not actually going to buy my item. So that's why I really recommend you do what I mentioned earlier, which is just asking like, hey, I'm a serious buyer. What's your best price for pickup today or best price for pickup ASAP? There is an etiquette to the buying process and negotiating process. And you really want to make sure that you are just being respectful and if you are trying to buy something for 75% off the listed price, which is probably already at a discount from the original retail price, then maybe you don't need to be buying it in the first place. <laughs> You know, you want to come across like you're a serious buyer and you want to get the best deals, but just always try to do your due diligence or research into what you're buying. And if the price they're selling it for is already a really good deal. And if you want something on top of that, maybe like 15 to 25% off additional. Honestly, if it's an item that's pretty desirable and they already have it at a great price, it's probably going to go like that. I mean, pieces move quickly. So yeah, just try to be careful when it comes to negotiating and remember to be polite. Our last don't is also one that's a little bit uh, subjective depending on, I guess, you and your buying style. Don't deal with people who are not local to your area. And I don't mean like they have to literally live in your city, but more so like, can you go see the item in person or are you picking it up in person or are you paying them in person? I think that a lot of times when things start getting shipped or delivered from very far away, it just increases the risk factor of the transaction. And I think when it comes to home items, once again, they're always most likely some sort of an investment. And I would really wanna make sure that whatever I'm investing in is exactly what I want it to be. So I like to go and meet in person, either at the person's house or some sort of public meetup spot if it calls for that. You know, there's certain things like, I'll bring my candlestick back out. If you find this on Marketplace and it happens to be in a different state or something, I don't know how it would even pop up on your Facebook Marketplace, but sure, pay for shipping and get this delivered to you. But if you're buying a piece of artwork or really anything that involves you being able to like actually check the condition of the piece, just deal with people locally. It's so much easier. I also find that the people that I meet locally are always really cool. Like I've actually made a couple friends off of Facebook from doing these transactions. So, you know, I'm not telling you to go out and make friends with everybody, but you know, it is a thing that could happen if you are buying locally versus buying something from far away. And you know, in addition to plenty of other reasons why you would wanna do your transactions locally, going back to our first point about asking that question of, you know, do you have anything for sale that you haven't listed yet that you think I might like? You can't really ask that if you're buying items that are getting shipped to you. So yeah, I just really love that in-person connection. I like being able to see what I'm buying in person, meet the people. It just makes the whole process feel more fun and engaging and interesting. And I also love instant gratification. I really love being able to get whatever I'm buying day of um, and not having to like wait for it to ship to me. So that's another big benefit to Facebook Marketplace is you get things much quicker than if you were to order them new online and had to wait a really long time for shipping. It's really wild how long some furniture takes to ship to you. But yeah, Facebook is great. I love it. It's, this isn't a video about why I like it, but I assume if you've made it to this far in the video, you're probably a fan of the platform too, so you get it. <laughs> All right, guys, that concludes today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun sharing my best do's and don'ts with you. Before you click off the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you have not yet already done that, and also leave a comment and let me know what is your best Facebook Marketplace find that you have ever come across. This is a chance for you to really just showcase your win because I'm really curious to know what you found and the price you got it for. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you on the next video. Bye. <laughs>